Welcome back to Let's Launch. This video is also on the SpaceX Starship. It is a huge revolutionary rocket which is due to launch very soon. The CEO stated that it could launch as soon as the month of July. This video is the second part of the design. If you haven't seen the previous parts, I strongly recommend you watch them. They'll be in the description. Anyways, let's get started. Super Heavy is the name of the first stage of the Starship staff. It is 70 meters tall, 9 meters wide, and can hold up to a total of 33 sea level rocket engines. As we said before, the booster provides 72 mega newtons of thrust. The tanks can hold up to a total of 3.6 kilotons of propellant, or 9.7 million pounds. Of that, 2.8 kilotons, or 6.2 million pounds, are liquid oxygen, while 0.8 kilotons, or 1.8 million pounds, is methane. It is said to have a total of 280 liters of hydraulic fluids for its systems. Of, a, of the total dry mass of 160 to 200 tons, 80 tons are for the tanks, while the engine mount is combined with the engines and is actually only 2 tons. The interstage, which connects the two stages together, is 20 tons. Its 3 ton grid fins are actually powered by electricity. The fins are aligned as you would expect, instead of being 90 degrees apart, they are different amounts apart to give better control in certain axes. Another important function of these amazing fins is to land the booster. Why they have to land the booster is because the, because the booster doesn't have legs, so instead of legs, the booster lands using Mechazilla. This is a structure which is a set of arms and the launch tower. Why it can, why it can use Mechazilla and not legs is because it doesn't have to land on different planets. Basically, when the rocket lands, the fins are aligned close to the arms. By the way, in this case, the fact that Super Heavy can hover really helps as they use that time while hovering to align them. Anyways, once the rocket cuts off, the arms will also go down with it, but that is also to absorb shock. The second stage is quite a bit different than the first stage. It is only 50 meters tall, 20 meters less than the booster, while still being 9 meters in diameter. The second stage will also be able to be used during longer stays in space. Its dry mass is also quite a bit lower than the booster's. The second stage has a dry mass of only 100 tons. Its payload volume is said to be 1,000 cubic meters or 35,000 cubic feet. That is so big that it makes a pressurized volume of the International Space Station look a little small. The ship has an internal volume of 80 cubic meters bigger than the ISS, even though the ISS took decades to make. It can hold a total of 1.2 kilotons or 2.6 million pounds of fuel. Of that, some of it is in the header tanks, and the rest is in the main tanks. It has two different tanks because when it loads and it does its crazy maneuver, which tilts the fuel. When the tanks are too low, the engine will also take in some air, and that won't give it enough fuel and everything, and it will also damage the engines. The craft also has reaction control thrusters. The rocket has six engines. Three for vacuum optimized, three for sea level. The flaps, do, uh, the flaps on the rocket do two things. One, they produce extra drag on the way down, and two, they help control the craft, just like the grid fins on the Falcon 9s and Super Heavy. It has a total of four flaps, two small ones at the top and two bigger ones at the bottom. The heat shield is kept is the heat shield is to keep the craft from melting during re-entry and is made of thousands and thousands of hexagonal tiles. The tiles are made of silica and, and are meant to make and require no maintenance. They are slightly spaced out because when the craft re-enters, it will get hot and, and the tiles will expand. The steel body can bear a tiny bit of heat too before melting. That's it for this video and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing as that will not only help me, but it will also help you to not miss the next and final part of the series. Some other videos that you might want to watch will be displayed above, including the next video in the series I've published yet, along with the previous video in the series and the first video in the series.